and I gotta get ready to, I hate that it all. Hi ladies, Amanda, we're so excited that you could join us and everyone else that's here. Um, Rebecca and I are so excited to bring StyleRx to you today and we are featuring all things icing. If you watched um, How to Lose a Man in 10 Days, you might understand that we are talking about accessories and everything that makes us sparkle. So this is one of those things that I feel is really important to really bring your personality out. And a lot of women tend to say, oh, I don't wear necklaces or, oh, I don't, you know, that's not me. So Rebecca and I are gonna show you lots of different styles, lots of different ways that you can pull your personality into the clothes that you're wearing, the lifestyle that you have, and also show you how to have a little bit of fun with some unexpected twists. So you don't have to be one that layers on the jewelry all the time. Maybe an accessory to you is just a little tiny belt. Maybe you don't do any of that. So you get a really fun bag. We're gonna cover all of that today. And we're also gonna talk price points because for me personally, my most expensive items are always gonna be the clothes I wear. Somebody else may feel like a really expensive shoe is important to them. This is where you can really think about your budget and think about your price per wear or whatever is important to you. For me, I'm kind of sporty, I'm dirty a lot, I'm outside. So the jewelry and things that I wear, this is why I love cabbie jewelry because it's perfect for my price point. It's perfect for my lifestyle. And I'm gonna spend more money on the clothes because I want to be really comfortable, but I might love a trendy shoe. So we're gonna cover all of that today. And to start, I'm going to be talking about hats. Now, this is something that maybe not everyone is super comfortable in wearing out. And so I'm gonna cover a few different styles and maybe why you might wear them. There's been a really big trend. And since we're going into fall, I wanna talk about a stocking hat first. And this baby is a very, very, very vintage cabbie hat. So it is one I've kept for years. It actually has a matching scarf and we had a little fun bolero, but it's really old, but it's been one of my favorites. And the reason I like it is simply the color. I can wear it with any pop of color. I love that it's toned down, but a lot of women are not just wearing stocking hats to stay warm. They are wearing them as part of their street style. So you can pop it on, pull your hair. I just cut my hair. It's a little weird to see shorter hair coming out of a hat. But you can pop that on, have your earrings and wear it as part of your outfit and you're good to go and you're nice and warm. Now, another one that I have fallen in love with this season and hats are kind of new for my street style. I've never been super comfortable. So I wanna encourage you guys, all these things can be taken off. So play with them a little bit and have a little fun. So I have really loved a felt hat this season and felt really kind of lends to colder weather um, depending on the color that you're wearing. But I also love these paired with a really yummy sweater. So whether it's this black one or I happen to have, you know me, I'm like a serenity tea lover. So if I see a serenity tea in one color, I'm gonna get it in all the others. And I tend to do the same thing with hats. So I've got the exact same hat in the kind of caramel felt. And the reason I went with these two basic hats is I really feel like they encompass my entire wardrobe so I could throw them on. Now, two other ones that I wanna talk about really quick has to do more with lighter temperatures and also texture. Now, everybody loves a good trucker hat, okay? So, you can wear this out and about with your ATC leggings. It can be anything. There's some really fun ones that have some great statements on them. I actually love this because I like it kind of toned down. It's actually probably ready for the wash because I wear it so much. But another one is our skincare is so important. And so you guys, hats can be fun just to wear out. And you'll notice this has a woven texture. So this is really great for the spring, the summer. It keeps the sun off of your face. It's really, really a nice way to add to your skincare. And what I loved about this when I bought it is it does have this cute little bow in the back. 
And it also allows for me to pull my hair up in a in like a low ponytail in the back if it's something that I want to do. So I'm going to throw this over to Rebecca and she's now going to talk. I got to fix my hair. <laughs> she is now going to um, talk to us about scarves and different ways we can wear them, different types and all the fun because she is the scarf queen. So Rebecca, I'm going to turn it to you. Oh, well, thank you, Amy. And I 100% need all of the details on that adorable little hat you wore in the last um, with the bow. So send me that when we get off here. But I do, in fact, adore scarves. I wear a scarf most every day in the fall and winter because I don't like being cold and I have a long giraffe neck and it gets cold really easy. So <laughs> scarves are something that I really do um, gravitate towards. Now, I'm gonna cover just three basic scarves for you today and I'm gonna start with a beginner scarf. So if you're one that has not ever done anything with scarves and you're feeling a little bit insecure about it, this is the one I would recommend. And it is our nice, thin um, scarf that we've got this season. We call it the Fable Scarf this season. But these pieces are, we've had this, I think, three or four different seasons now, and they're always a hit. They've got fantastic, not only the color and print mixing, but because they're so lightweight, they're really easy to kind of wind around. And then you can use this as a belt. You can wind it around and um, put it on your wrist and tie it on your wrist as a um, fun little bracelet. They're fun to put in um, on your purse as just a little pop of something on your purse to funk that up a little bit. They're really fun in your hair, so you can do lots of different ways um, with that. So, and of course, you can obviously put it around your neck and wear it as a scarf too. Um, and there's a lot of options as far as that. You can wear it up close, you can just kind of um, tuck it through, but there are so many um, things that you can do with scarves. I probably should record a video just on scarf wearing, but this is the easiest thing you can ever do with a scarf. So you just fold it in half and then you pull the ends through the loop and then you just kind of shoosh it. So um, that is a super, super, super easy to wear a scarf and this long piece, um, this long scarf makes it even easier. So add that to your list of things that maybe you should look at. Now, another one of my favorite scarves simply because I do like to wear them at my neck and also turkey neck runs in my family probably shouldn't say that, but so I like to cover up these little wrinkles right here. And so even in the summertime, you'll sometimes catch me with just a little neckerchief. And I do that with these smaller um, square scarves. And so I just fold them up. So I fold two of the points in to meet each other and then kind of sandwich it up. So it's a long skinny piece like this. And then I might twist it a little bit, pull it around my neck, and then I can fluff this up and make it a little thicker if I want. I can keep it really thin, but it's just another super, super easy way to not only add color. So I'm a person that um, black tends to kind of drag me down. And so I need color up here by my face. And so if I'm gonna wear something black on top, I'm going to use um, something to break that up. And a little neckerchief scarf works really, really well for that. Now, it was 33 degrees when I woke up this morning. I'm sure Amy's been having that for a while. We actually had frost for the first time here a few weeks ago in Kansas, which I am not ready for. But when we move into the colder months, I definitely want something that's gonna keep me warm. And honestly, a scarf is one of the easiest things you can do um, to give yourself more warmth. And we've given you the perfect option with our little bundle up scarf this season. And this is just a faux fur. It is so, so super soft and snuggly. It's just comes right up, keeps you all warm. There's not going to be any draft between your neck and your coat because it's all covered up. And since Amy's gotten such a cute little um, fun shorter haircut, she's probably really gonna wanna embrace us to keep her neck warm. So 
those are just a few of my thoughts on scarves and how much I love them. Amy, we are headed back to you and jewelry. Okay. Jewelry is one of my favorite things to talk about. Um, it's also now that I'm in my mid forties, it's been a way for me to express myself a little bit. I think I talked a couple of weeks ago about how I really wanted to be rebellious, but was, could never really be rebellious. And so jewelry is kind of my expression. And one of my favorite things to do is to stack these little, you can get these little tiny, I'll hold it up. I don't know where my camera's at. Can you see that? I love these little kind of earring clips because they're not permanent. So I was never daring enough to go get a tattoo. My mother threatened to throw me out if I put too many earrings up my ear. So I love that there's these fun little clips. The other thing is you'll notice I have a vintage cabbie necklace on and it's actually layered and it's three separate pieces. And so what I love about this is if, so this is a, a vintage one, but I'll talk about one that we have this season. If you're totally in the mood to have a lot of like glam or layer it, maybe you have a turtleneck on, so you really want to create some dimension. I love keeping them together. But what I love that Cabby does with our jewelry specifically is a lot of times they make it so we can separate the jewelry and wear them as separate pieces. So maybe you're not in the mood to have so much chunk or have it be so gaudy. Now, I know there's also people on here that go, oh, I just don't do necklaces. I have children, I have babies, um, but I love a little dainty piece. All you have to do is just put one little tiny, tiny piece on and it does make it feel really special and nice, but it also kind of draws the eye down. Um, so maybe you're not into huge chunky jewelry like the one I just had. But this season, we have a couple really beautiful dainty pieces. And our honey necklace is probably my favorite. But this one is also my favorite because it's got the two tones of the silver and gold. And I just got cabbie amnesia and can't remember the name of it. But um, you can go to jewelry and see it. The other thing that I think is really important is to get a good statement necklace. Now you don't have to wear them all the time. And these are sometimes the ones that are bigger. And so when I call it, say a statement necklace, it's a lot like that one jacket that's really gonna stand out. And so this is also a vintage one, but this season our statement necklace is this really beautiful heart with the pearl, okay? So the idea is that it's really gonna draw the eye down. Now, a lot of women don't like to show cleavage. And so a really long necklace like this is gonna do the same thing that a V-neck would do. It's really gonna pull your eye down and really give you something to look at. The other thing that I love about them is usually if they're long enough, it gives you some play. So one of my favorite things to do with this cute vintage cross is actually to double the rope and have it shorter and then layer it with something else. I'm not gonna do it up because it will take too long. Um, color, Rebecca mentioned color. And um, my hair with all the stuff I put on is really gonna be beautiful by the end. And I was really excited to see her talk about scarves and the different sizes because Amanda, actually we did a closet audit with her and we found a ton of scarves that were her grandmother's and we got to pull them into the closet audit in our style session. So I love that you highlighted those, but I also think color can be popped with jewelry. So these are some vintage cabbie pieces that show a lot of color, but maybe in a subtle way. So maybe you don't feel like doing a lot and you just want a cute little dangle earring. These from last season are perfect. This is a very vintage bracelet that we had that actually turned into a necklace at one time. And I love this piece because it's just that little simple pop of color that I may pull, you know, maybe this is all the color I have on. Maybe I'm wearing black, like Rebecca said, but I, and we'll talk shoes later, but maybe I'll pull that yellow shoe in or something with it. And that might be all the color that I have. Um, another thing that I really, really love to do, of course, I didn't do it as much when I had younger children, but I would layer bangles on my arm 
Um, obviously, if I'm working outside, that's not something I'm going to do. Am I looking down? Let me look up. I've got two cameras on me here. I got to remember to look up. Um, and then, uh, of course, I mentioned it last time. You've got to have some pearls. I don't think you have to have them all the time. They don't have to be expensive, you guys. This is the one thing about accessories. Some things can be very trendy and you can really go a little bit cheaper because it might not be something that you're gonna wanna keep forever. I love costume jewelry because I was raised with a grandmother that always had jewelry everywhere. Now she had her really, really expensive diamonds. Um, and she had some really, really nice pieces. But I'm finding that a lot of the jewelry I took when she passed away so that my daughter could play dress up with it really was cheap. And growing up, I didn't know. It just looked really, really nice. And so what we're trying to do here is teach you that there might be some really, really nice pieces that you want to invest in. And that would be like maybe a nice strand of pearls it might be um, that really pretty statement necklace that you just fell in love with, but don't feel like you always have to. I mean, my little, I'm really into layering chokers right now. I think this one was $10 on Amazon. So I combine it and I layer those with some of my more expensive pieces. My little ear clips, super cheap. Now, when I'm gonna put earrings in my ears because I do get infected, I'm gonna go with a, an earring that doesn't cause any infection. So. Keep that in mind. Um, all these accessories can be played with on different price points. So now I'm gonna turn it over to Rebecca and this is where you might wanna spend a little more money because we are gonna talk shoes. All right, thanks, Amy. So yes, I am a firm believer in investing in quality pieces that will stand the test of time that are classic and you, you are going to have in your um, closet or wardrobe for the next 20 years or that you're going to put on your feet, which is going to affect your entire body. So um, you, you're going to see a lot of different things here. And it's kind of funny because I've got about 40 different pairs of shoes that I could have grabbed. And as I'm looking at this pile that I have sitting next to me, there's a common denominator. So you all, you all are going to laugh, but um, I am a firm believer in investing in shoes. I was in a car accident several years ago and um, prior to that loved to rock sky high stilettos and could get the Jessica Simpson ones that were so super cute and didn't matter. I could be in them all day. Today, not so much. So I've really got to pay attention to um, how a shoe supports my foot and my entire body. So a brand that I 100% love for that fact is Joan Olaf. And you guys have seen these before. These are a fun pop color shoe, but I've also got a cute little um, booty here that is a dressy piece, um, kind of a bootyish pump type um, shoe and it's Joan Olaf as well. Now, these are a pricier shoe. They are an investment. However, this shoe I'm gonna have for the next 20 years, it's not ever gonna go out of style. Leopard's a neutral, I can wear it with everything. Um, it's gonna be great with a trouser. It's gonna be great with kind of a schlubby, um, torn up boyfriend jean to give it a completely different look. So be paying attention to things like that. But Joan Olaf, check it out. She does make incredible shoes. She's a podiatrist turned um, shoemaker. So she knows what you need. And when, even when, so I did a cabbie video shoot and was on my feet for 14 hours in these heels and I did not hurt. Blew my mind. Didn't think that that could possibly happen. It does because they completely cradle your feet um, correctly. All right. Another piece that I believe you need to have in your wardrobe, even if you only pull them out to wear once or twice a year, is a pump. Now, Leopard, I've only got about 30 pumps and this is the one that I grabbed, so sorry about that. But um, get a black or a nude pump that matches your skin tone. Uh, I absolutely love nude because I just feel like it elongates the leg sometimes. And if you're gonna get a um, black pump, then make sure it's got a lower vamp, this part, 
don't go with one that comes up here because that cuts your leg off. So um, those are a few of my tips about pumps, but these have got a great little kitten heel. Um, they're J. Renee, so they're not a high, high dollar deal. They're just a fun piece that I can have around and wear. And it's a little different than black or nude. But again, if you're gonna have one pump in your closet, I'd say get a nude one that matches your skin tone and invest in that. All right, another piece that I love, especially when we're in kind of an in-between season that like we are right now. So it's gonna be 80 degrees here today. It was 30 this morning. So it's summer fall. Uh, and so this is a neat little wedge from Tom's. It's got great fall colors, but yet it's open toe. So you're still showing a little bit of summer. It's got an espadrille type um, wedge to it. So you've got um, just a little piece of summer with fall colors. And I think it helps transition. It looks great with our cords that we have this season. So you can really move that into fall. Another um, thing, and I don't even have a pair of loafers that I grabbed, which blows my mind because I wear loafers almost daily. So um, loafers are another fantastic thing that I like to wear with trousers, with jeans, um, and it's a no heel. So you don't have to worry about hurting your back that way. And you can, there's all kinds of fun ones. I've got some black and white penny loafers and some plaid, um, some bright yellow and turquoise. You can the world is your oyster with loafers anymore. And then another little tenny that I love, which I know um, Amy's gonna show you some really cute tennies here coming up. This is a Dolce Vita um, tennis shoe and it is very flat. So I actually wear that one with an insole. If you've got a, a shoe that you love or if you've got a cute little trendy sneak that you want to buy but it just doesn't have the support you need, get some good arch support or um, a custom orthotic that you can slide into different pieces. That's another way that you can really kind of help yourself in the long run. So um, yeah, I think I'm gonna leave it at that with shoes and let Amy pick things back up when she shows off her shoes. That's awesome, Rebecca. And I'm so glad that you touched on the importance of um, a shoe because I actually had a client reach out to me yesterday that has plantar fasciitis. So I'm going to mention another brand when I get to shoes. So don't let me forget. Um, but right now we're going to diverse away from, is that the right word? I just divert, divert from shoes. And I'm going to talk belts. So this is another fun way for you to pop some color or even break up that middle and create a waist. So maybe you're in all black or maybe denim on denim, or maybe you wanna do column, but you need to create a waist. You could add a fun statement belt that's gonna pop and create your waist. So this is a vintage cabbie belt. And I have to say not to just, I know Rebecca and I are both cabbie stylists, but I honestly, our jewelry and our belts for the price point, I don't think they can be outdone. I absolutely love our belts. I love what they do and the thought behind them. And so my entire closet, other than a few OB style belts are cabby and same with my jewelry. I just feel like they feel that they, they kind of pull in the gap that I need. And I love that I don't really have to go outside of my cabbie wardrobe to find things that fit. And I love that they put thought into things that can print mix, whether it's a fun little zebra belt that we've had. Um, I'm just gonna show you some that go through jeans. So we have, like Rebecca talked about the different sizes of scarves. We have these fun, now this one was kind of a fun snake skin with a nice little buckle that we had. And I love the sparkly buckle on this one because I felt like it dressed it up just enough. Maybe I wore it with jeans, but I had like a fun blazer on. So that was where I would go to that. Another one that gave me some fun sparkle was just a simple black belt that Cabby had, but they did this incredible sparkle buckle. And I loved this around the holidays all the time. I mean, I you can't have enough icing, you know what I'm saying? And so, you have to have a little sparkle, but those were some that would just go through my belt loops. And again, we've had leopard ones. Again, Rebecca has mentioned them being neutral. The zebra one, I print mix with all bright colors all the time. So I love to kind of print mix with my belt. It kind of makes me have some interest. 
And then I'm going to throw this way, way back to my original cabbie career. For those of you that know, I've done this twice. Um, we had this rope belt that you could throw on and hook kind of depending on if you really wanted it on your waist or around your hips. And then the tassel really hung. And I, this is genuine leather and it has lasted forever. And even in my banking days, I would hook my bank keys to this little look loop. And I just, I can wear it through my belt loops if I want, or I can wear it with a dress. So for me, um, versatility is really important in everything I buy. Um, if it's not functional, I find it sits in my closet and I'm, it was a waste of money. Um, and so I really like things that create versatility and grab and go. And so something that I can wear with a dress or anything is really important. So speaking of, there's another thing that another size that I think is really important is I love a good chunky belt. This is not going to go on your through your belt loops, obviously but it will help tailor in some of those big chunky sweaters that maybe you want to wrap and belt on the outside. Um, it's great, they're great to go over blazers if sometimes you do that, because a lot of times we'll belt a blazer and just fold it through. Um, but more importantly, it's a great way to pull some of that blousey fabric and create a beautiful waist. So another vintage cabbie belt that you've seen me wear over and over is this nude belt. And I also stick to basics if it's not a if it's not a print, like if it's not leopard or a zebra, my belts are they tend to be fairly neutral because I want to be able to wear them with many, many different things in my closet. So I always have kind of, okay, I have a tan, just like my hats. I had my tan hat and then I had my black belt. So this is an Obi style belt that you wrap and tie. Um, you can get them as cheap as you want. I had some cheap ones for a while and I just found I wore them over and over. And so I invested in some that were a little more expensive. So I've got two of those, one in kind of a muted gray and then one in black. And then I just wanted to show you this other really fun vintage cabbie belt that we had. So it belts, it looped through both the buckles and then the buckles were kind of fun. So that's my darker chocolate. Um, I just feel like belting is really important and it doesn't matter if you're sporty and all you want is a belt through your pants or maybe you just had a baby and you're not super comfortable. These are things that can be played with. You can start cheap. So like I said, with my Obi belt, I wasn't sure how much I would like it. I wasn't sure how long I needed it. So I started with a cheaper one. I found that I used it all the time. So then I started to look into things that I could really invest in. And so that's where I went and I went, okay, this is one I'm gonna wear a lot. Now I'm gonna go in a higher price point. And so some of these things, same with jewelry, same with shoes. If you're not gonna wear them very long, you, you know, but there's definitely reasons to invest. So I'm gonna throw it back over to Rebecca now. She's gonna touch on glasses and a little bit of jewelry, right? So let me mute. I think I'm just going to do glasses because my goodness, you did such an incredible job with jewelry. Um, all right. So glasses, these are actually my prescription glasses and something that I'm going to say about that for, for one thing, these are, you're going to wear them every day. Now I don't, because I don't technically have to, because well, I can see without them. So I fudge a lot, but um, if you're going to wear a glass every single day, you really need to pay attention to how it works with your skin tone, how it works with your face shape, how it reflects your personality. So if you have um, a very classic style, then your glasses should kind of reflect that. If you've got a little bit of a funky style, your, your glasses should reflect that. So um, this is actually a um, tortoiseshell. I think these are Kate Spade. I looked all over for them and found them. Yep, Kate Spade. Anyway, they're a brown tortoiseshell. Hopefully you can see that. And then they've got gold on the inside. So it works really well with my warm undertones. If you have more cool undertones, then go towards more cool colors. Black would be um, one that you can go to. Uh, I love those really chunky, funky looking black glasses. I just can't pull them off, unfortunately. Um, but 
take the time to try on several different glasses. Make, make just plans to spend some time at your optometrist or if you're going through Warby Parker or one of those that you can do online, then don't think you're gonna find the perfect glass on your first shop um, because you're probably not. And reach out to your stylist and then a couple friends that you respect their style and just take some pictures and show them, hey, what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Um, and I would say go with your gut too, because a lot of times the one that you first are gravitating to, that's the one you should go to. So these are my real glasses. Now I, um, I do wear my Bluetooth glasses every, or not Bluetooth, blue light blocker. <laughs> there's all these darn technology things to worry about anymore. Um, I do wear my blue light blocker glasses every single day. And if you don't have a pair and you're on the computer very much, I would say invest in them. These are kind of um, bigger grandpa looking glasses, but I don't mind because they cover, they give me a nice big coverage area. I don't end up with um, the headaches and the eye strain and stuff as I would normally have working on a computer. Um, and you can get these super cheap. They're maybe $15 online. I can get you some links if you need. Um, but there again, you can play around with those, find a shape that you're like, hmm, I think this would probably work for me. Get a blue light blocker glass and um, wear those, make sure you like them. And then you can invest in a real um, pair of glasses with your optometrist. And then um, sunglasses. So I've got a lot of different sunglasses and you know, I, yeah, I love all different shapes. I feel like sunglasses are something that you can really um, kind of have fun with because you can get ones that don't necessarily work for your coloring and work for your face shape. You just love it. Like wear the heart ones if you want, you know, just have fun. Um, one of the things that I know is if I'm going to be wearing sunglasses, they're going to go like that. So I've just learned from years and years of wearing them that I've got to go with the little plastic nose mold thing instead of the one that kind of pokes up, which I have huge cheeks if you haven't noticed. And so the ones that like fit on your um, nose and kind of stand up a little bit actually work better for my cheeks and my laughing, but um, they don't work for my lifestyle. So take all of those things into consideration when you're shopping and just have fun with it. That's what this is all about. Amy, back to you. Okay, I am kind of sitting here giggling, just loving everything you said about glasses because I think like my daughter Breely um, got some really, really cute purple leopard ones and she only wears them to school every other day or whatever. And um, I am one that will invest in a really good pair of sunnies and not wear cheap ones. So I only have one pair of sunnies and they get scratched to death until I finally invest in another pair. So it probably comes from a husband that when we first got married, he'd be like, the hell you wearing on your face? <laughs> like if I tried to get kind of funny ones, Amanda knows my husband so well because they're cousins. And so she's probably like, oh yeah, he'd totally go there. So I really started to just buy really nice um, sunglasses and call it good. But I, I wish I was more playful with sunglasses. Okay, I'm gonna touch on shoes a little bit as well because as you can see, Rebecca and I both love shoes. And this is one where I do invest in really nice shoes, but I also buy cheap shoes. And so whenever I'm going out, I always think, how far am I gonna walk? <laughs> how long am I gonna stand? Is there a place to sit? And if I ever do it wrong, or if I think, then I will put a second pair of shoes in my car. I mean, I just, it's one of those things. Sometimes I just want that perfect shoe to match my outfit. So I'm gonna to touch on a few categories really quick because Rebecca did such a great job, but shoes are something we all love and we get a ton of questions as stylists on them. So I think having two perspectives is really good. So I'm gonna start casual because they are really more my lifestyle. And you've seen these before, but I'm having so much fun with them this season. I really want to show. So my more expensive sneaker was just an Adidas sneaker. And I will say it took a while for these to break in and to actually get comfortable, but I do love them. And then my cheap shoes. 
So um, these are blowfish. I think I got them for $26 a pair on Amazon, but actually because they're casual, I do wear them all over. So just because the price point's lower, it doesn't mean it's gonna be less comfortable. Like Rebecca said, you can always get inserts if it's something that you really, really love. The next one I wanna talk about is a high heel. And I agree with Rebecca, functionality is really, really important. Um, but I have some of those statement heels that are like half hour shoes, <laughs> but I love them. So I will wear them through the church parking lot and to church because I know I'm gonna be sitting for a while, but they look really good with a dress. So one of my favorites, this is a Sam Edelman and they are a little bit higher price point, but not overly expensive, but I have loved these. And these are one that I will keep. And again, they're, they're fairly neutral. So they go with everything and anything. So I was willing to spend a little bit more money on them. Now I was kind of giggling when Jessica, when she mentioned Jessica Simpson, because these are a Jessica Simpson. I absolutely love them. My feet hate them. So I love to wear these with a tight legging and like a fun jacket to kind of make it be a little more rock and roll kind of funky and fun. I also love this color because with our cabbie wardrobe, it's so fun to pull out some of the colors that we use. So I may do this with a skirt, um, but this is definitely one I'm gonna have a spare shoe in my car. I'm also gonna not plan to walk. <laughs> at all, like very far, but it's okay. Cause they were fun. Now, one of my favorites, she also mentioned her espadrille wedge. So I'm a firm believer that we have to have those as well. And this is one, this is a cabbie shoe. It's been one of my favorites. Cause again, it's a great neutral. And actually I find it pretty comfortable to wear. And then of course a leopard. Now this one actually has a really good insole and I'm trying, it's called heel rest. So it's by aerosol, aerosols, aerosols. And it actually is quite bendy and quite comfortable. And I do go to this one a lot. And I loved that there was a little peekaboo in this. Um, so I will wear this if I have to go a lot further. Now, really quick, um, I wanna talk booties um, because I think you can have a lot of fun with booties and generally they can be just like a heel. They can be comfortable or not. So Doc Martens have made their way back. This one has a pretty tall heel on it, um, but I loved it because it was a little bit different. I'm not going to walk a long way in these just because it's got a heel. Also, my husband's 5'9 and he hates it when I tower over him. So if I'm with him, I may weigh a little, wear a little bit lower shoe. I don't care. I'd rather have the power in the house, so I don't care if I'm taller. Um, this is one of my favorite booties that Cabby ever did. And so I wear this a lot, but again, it's a pointy toe. There's not much of a heel. So I really plan for my walking. Now, Rebecca mentioned some great brands. She talked about Joan Olaf. Um, this one is a Vionic booty. And Vionic, again, it's an orthopedic heel. They, um, I believe, were also pediatrician, not pediatrician. Oh my gosh, they were foot doctors. I have to go to Amy language here. Um, so they really specialize in a comfortable heel. And these I can wear all day. I can run miles in. They are, again, if I'm going to spend more money, it's going to be a neutral classic. So either a leopard or a chocolate or a black, something that I know I can grab and go to. And then the last one I wanted to mention was an over the knee boot. Now I have some cheaper ones that have a heel and I know I'm not gonna wear them very far. These are real suede. They're much more expensive. These are Vince Camuto. Is that how you say it, say it Rebecca? Yeah, Vince Camuto. Um, but I love Vince Camuto shoes. If you've never bought his their boots, they're awesome. So I have a couple of different pairs and these just go to just, they don't go up to my thigh. They go right to the top of my kneecap and obviously they're flatter. And I did that because I knew 
in fact, when I look for boots, most of the time anymore, I look for a flat boot, especially because in our weather, I want to be able to wear them winter long. And I feel like a high boot just makes, I'm 44 now. I got to be careful. I don't want to slip like an old lady and like break my hip. So I am starting to really be much more conscious of the shoe that I wear and the occasion that I'm going to be wearing it. Um, I don't think that you have to take away style by buying practical. And so um, I just think that shoes are a lot, that's why we love cabbie, right? Because it's practical wardrobe, but yet it's super comfortable, but it, you don't, you feel phenomenal and very beautiful in it. And shoes can do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna turn it back to Rebecca. She's gonna end it for us on a note with the purses. I did forget to mention in belts, our sparkle belt in the new arrivals. So Rebecca's gonna mention that um, when she closes this out. So Rebecca. All right, yes. And on the over the knee boot, that's kind of like any other thing. So if you're not sure about a trend and if it's gonna work for you, then um, I say invest in something that's pretty cheap and then make your bigger investment. And I did that with the over the knee boots. I got a black and a gray pair in a, just a short half inch heel. Um, and I wore them to make sure I was going to like them or actually wear them for a few seasons. And then I went all in with a pair of Stuart Weitzman's, which, um, I'm so glad I did because when you actually invest in a quality product, no matter what it is, but I mean, I look at that boot compared to my other ones and you're like, okay, yeah, there's a huge difference. So I would say if you're, if you've fallen in love with something, then go ahead and, and take the leap. So yes, Amy did allude to the fact that we've got some more fun stuff coming and I'm going to show you um, some extra fun stuff, but first purses. So this is another thing that if you, if there's a trend happening that you're like, mm, I'm not so sure about that try it out on your purse. And so snakeskin was super, super popular starting um, really last fall and very much in the spring. And a lot of my gals are like, oh yeah, I don't want that on my body, but you could have a really cute purse. And so this is just a target purse. It's not anything that was expensive. It's a great little size. Um, so it's big enough to hold everything that you need, but not so big that you're gonna break your back carrying it. Uh, and it's just super fun. It does have a longer strap that I can wear, but I just like the short little handles. Um, so it's a way where I'm not real crazy about snakeskin on my actual body, but I really like it as my fun purse. And that's a good size. Um, and pay attention to the size, because especially if you're one that's more petite, maybe having a big honking bag like this one doesn't make much sense because it looks like your bag's carrying you. So um, body type and your size actually does matter a little bit when you're selecting a purse, especially if it's going to be something that you invest in. Now, if you're just going to Target and getting something you like, Absolutely. But if you're going to spend a few hundred dollars or thousands of dollars, make sure that it is the one for you. This is another fun piece. I just like kind of throw over your shoulder totes. And this is a um, kind of a deconstructed purse. It's in a great neutral color. So I can throw a bunch of stuff in here. I can use it with whatever I've got on, it's not going to clash. And I think that I got this from um, one of my Rachel Zoe style box delivery. So that was a, a fun little surprise. Now, if you like big old bags and carrying all the things like I do, huh, we've got something coming for you in about a month. It's not going to be in this new release, but in our third new release, which is brand new this season two, we are bringing you five incredibly giftable items that you're going to love. Now, um, we were gifted this this summer when we had our training for this fall collection, and I've had it at all my shows, and everybody is like petting it and loving on it, and they, they, they say it's their therapy purse. They don't even need to carry it. They'll just keep it in their office drawer, so <laughs> be watching for this, but this is one of those big old bags that you can carry everything. My laptop fits in here really nicely, and all of the things. It is soft. 
it's got a snap closure and it kind of opens up to a neutral lining. It does have these ties at the side so you can cinch it in a little if you should like, but um, it is the same as our bundle up scarf that you just saw a little bit ago. Now, some other smaller things. If you are um, wanting to just kind of dash out the door and not have your hands full of things, Amy had some incredible backpack options that I think we highlighted last week. And so or that was on our favorite things. Was that just last week? I can't remember, but it's in our Friday favorites. And um, I love the idea of backpacks. Now, you know that the little belt back bags have been having a moment for a while and they're still here. However, I'm really liking these ones that have a long enough strap that you can wear them kind of cross body-ish. So it, it holds it up snug close to your body, but yet it's just a little bit of something. So you can um, not have a huge thing. And another uh, purse that I absolutely love and is probably my go-to purse right now is a crossbody bag. And this is again, a little fun snakeskin piece that I picked up, um, I don't know, probably Target with the chain detail. So, you know, you've got that trendy edginess to it. And if, I mean, you can throw it on with a pair of jeans and a t-shirt and kind of look like a rocker chick, uh, which is fun. So another piece that we have coming when this big yummy bag comes, we have got a gorgeous, crossbody bag. You are not going to want to miss out on it. It's got a black base and then the leopard print flap that is like our beast belt from a couple falls ago. Ladies, it is to die for. Going to be something you'll have in your closet for years. Uh, so speaking of new arrivals, I've been telling you about all the things that you can't have quite yet. Uh, next week, we're going to be back with two stylist friends of ours and we're going to be talking all things Oceans 8. And Oceans 8 is our brand new limited release collection that is getting ready to launch. So you'll be able to hear all the ins and outs of all the pieces. I think there's 12 or 13 new pieces that are on that collection. We have all of them. We'll be able to talk to you. And you're gonna have the benefit of hearing from stylists that range from five foot two or three. I think Vonda is, very petite, so um, she's gonna be able to talk with um, things that work well for shorter women. And then Amy and I are at the opposite end of that height spectrum. So you'll be able to um, just really get a good feel for things, ask questions. So make sure that you tune in then, and we can't wait to spend that time with you. Rebecca, that's awesome. And podiatrist is what I was looking yes, for. Yes, <laughs> that is the word. <laughs> and I'm sitting here watching Mandy's little baby Blythe jumping up and down and she's so adorable. Oh. And I just love it. So Mandy, thank you for joining us. We love you so much. And anybody that's watching this on the recording, thank you for watching it. Thank you for supporting both of us, Rebecca and I. I mean, I don't, I can't speak for her, but I have loved this probably as much as anybody just seeing her beautiful face every single week and and talking so that connection is so important and if this is just something that kind of frees your mind for a little while we look forward to bringing it to you every week and so well Mandy unless you have any other questions do you have questions no we'll just go ahead and end it and we will um see you next week and we're so excited about Oceans 8 so cool, such great pieces, and they favor the holidays a little bit. So you'll be getting your wish list for your husband in advance. Do your shopping for him, then you'll both be happy. So and you'll definitely be happy. There won't be any duds for Christmas. No kidding. All right, Mandy, thank you so much for joining us.